Now that we've successfully built our app with the basic CRUD functions, it's time to learn how to do unit testing with React. Now, unit testing is usually done when you want to scale your app and add on more new features, but each time you add a feature or even update an existing feature, it gets very tedious to, and it gets very repetitive and tedious to manually test if that feature works properly. And basically when you're uploading an application, when you're deploying an application to production, standard practice is to always have unit tests or integration tests or an even end-to-end -end tests. But unit test is basically the first line of def defense for your code to work properly. So the, the library that we'll be using for unit testing our code is enzyme and the way unit testing works in react is you basically test if your component renders properly like for example if the heading is rendered properly or if you have a list of nodes that will be rendered in your dom if that list renders properly or not if the button renders properly if you click on the button if something is triggered properly these are the things that you would basically test usual unit testing for back-end frameworks what we do is we test the individual function but in react the function testing the function does not actually make sense we usually just test if the if whatever is rendered in the dom is something that you expected to be rendered great so enough talking let's look at some of the frameworks that we'll be using for our unit testing we'll be using mocha for unit testing and enzyme is the framework that basically checks if things are properly rendered in the dom or not and and in enzyme we have two functions that we'll always be concerned with one is mount and another is shallow. Now mount basically mounts your component fully. Like for example, if your component has subcomponents inside, we'll, we'll also get to test upon those subcomponents properly. But shallow is usually done so just to check your component in a high level. So shallow is not that preferred, but if you, if you have a very complex component and you just want to test the outer props are properly delivered to that component, then you would use shallow. But if you want to test the whole component and the components that are rendered inside then you would use mount i always usually prefer mount but of course there the uses of these two is different depending on the situation right so enough about this we i want to also highlight that if this is your first time writing unit tests then there are some basic things that you would need to consider one is a describe block and an it block so as you can see over here we have a describe block that basically descri describes the whole component and an it block which has the individual assertions. If you want to test if the create button is rendered properly, you would have one it block that will just test for that. If you have another assertion that will just test if your notes are properly rendered, then you would have another it block that will test just if your notes are properly rendered or not. It block is basically a division inside the describe block which will test your individual assertions and it, and it is a way to organize your test code. We also have something called Synon, which will basically mock all your HTTP calls. So for example, we are calling the services like node service, get, node service, delete, node service, update. Now for that, we need to mock that API call instead of actually making that API call. This Synon library is what helps us in mocking those API calls for us. And we also need to worry about some assertions. Now, assertion library that we're going to be using is Chai. And in Chai, since we're using Mocha as our uh, as our testing framework, uh, Chai is the assertion library that is typically used with that. And in Chai, the way you write assertions is with an expect, expect block. So in my boilerplate that I've shown, it has all these test framework set up. So you have expect, you have Synon all set up for you. And the DOM that we're using is JS DOM, which is basically the browser that will open up to run your code in. And you don't need to worry about the test framework commands as well. Everything is all set up in the package.json as well. So if you check out the package.json, you'll notice that if you, if you write yarn test swatch, or if you write just yarn test, then it will run your test for it. So we already have a sample spec file for the home component. Let's just remove some of these uh, redundant files and fix the imports. We have a service that we are mocking with Synon and, and the, one of the good things about Synon is instead of writing individual Synon mocks, Sandbox is one mock that will just be mocked for this whole component. So if you have multiple API calls or multiple services in one component, you would use Sandbox for basically restoring that mock. So with Synon, what you would usually do is you would have to write synon.stub and then 
everything that follows and then in the after block you would have to write service.list.restore but using sandbox makes it easier for us because we can just do everything in one sandbox and restore every, all the API calls in one go. So this is just a convention that I try, I try to follow that's why I've used sandbox here. Okay so we we have a node service but our response does not actually look like look that simple we don't have just a array of strings we have basically a key value store database right firebase gives us everything in the form of key value pair so let's give a random id and then we'll have title right description just to be simpler okay so the first so we have a before each block, we have an after each block, and we have a render function, which basically mounts our home component. Our home component does not take any prop. Let's just check if it does. It doesn't. And in the first it block, we have an assertion that the home class has the text latte. Well, this has changed quite a bit from our initial boilerplate code. So let's just correct the assertion. So we have a container class and... Uh, that, that inside that we should expect the text to be noted and let's remove this another it block and just keep it simple as as simple as possible now one other thing is that since we use react router dom and in in our in our topmost component we have the browser router enclosed to it without this we don't get any access to the functions that we have inside the react router dom for example the route component the switch component or even the link component that we have used in our home page and then we'll get an error once we try to run this test because these are not recognized without the browser router enclosed inside the component so for that what we need to do is we need to enclose this with the browser router and it gets imported as well right so let's see if our test runs properly go to our terminal and then write yarn test great so the home component renders properly and the only thing we have asserted is if we have the noted text inside now you're wondering where did i get these kind of um, uh, syntaxes now this you'll find in the enzyme documentation in enzyme you'll have a more um, you'll get to see in what kind of assertions you can do with your component and find what you want to for example everything once you have mounted your component or shallow mounted your component everything is stored inside the wrapper variable so we have the wrapper variable here that we have initialized while calling our render function and after that we can find inside the wrapper we can find by either a component or an or a class and then at the zero index we can test if the props has something so if the props value props dot foo means the prop name is foo and if that equals to the value that you have supplied to that prop or the to that component so you can find all of these details inside this documentation and it's very thorough and then you can assert it properly and the one that we have used for our case is the text one so if you want to text if you want to see if anything inside your html wrapper or html component if the if just the text it could have something it could have additional html tags like span or a tag or whatever but once you once you basically assert with just the text it only f finds the text inside that html no matter what so it just finds the simple string inside the html All right so that's what we have done we've basically just first narrowed down our search with our class name and then we try to assert that if the text contains noted now this is like the basic test and in our next video we'll be covering more in depth with testing with enzyme for the components that we've written the home component and the note form component